Hi everyone, another week more You Don't Know Jack, episode 60, coming up now. And 30 seconds, people. Hello to you, Donnie here. How many so-called people will be playing? Just one. All alone? He is hoping some jaunty trivia can fend off the crushing loneliness. It What's won't. your name? No. Is that supposed to be a political statement? Yes. I'll take it from here. I'm calling you Miorge. Uh, it's like Miorge. George, but with fundamental differences. It's been a while All since we've right. seen Miorge. Now here's what you're going it? to do. Questions will ameliorize before you. Select the boutonniere next to the correct answer. There is a timer, so the sooner you buzz in, the more Sumerians you will make. <laughs> or revanquish. We're almost at go. Ten seconds. Off you glow. Uh, turn your head and cough, please. <coughs> as long as I can... don't have to sparkle there. I'll glow all I want. With other people's fingers. I am that white. Hey there, I'm Cookie, and like a shark, I have to keep moving or I'll die. Also, I like chum. Nail his feet to the floor. One player. All right, this is going to be a party. And today's Indeed. wrong answer of the game is brought to you a by Mysterious one. Boxes Incorporated. Pacta sunt savanda, pulvis adumbra sumus. Try to choose the wrong answer brought to you by our sponsor to get prizes and cash. Mysterious Boxes or Okay, let's begin. Which one is it to play on? First question. I could eat a whole mother goose. I'm doing a lot of statistical breakdowns of nursery rhymes and organizing them by category. First, I put Hickory Dickory Dock and other rhymes about clocks on this timeline. Now, which nursery rhyme info would not fit in my pie chart? You know, my chart featuring nursery rhymes with pies in them. Little Jack Horner's plum to thumb ratio, Old King Cole's distinct types of merriment, girls Georgie Porgy kissed, or varieties of bird deaths in Sing a Song of Sixpence. I remember bowls and fiddlers in Old King Cole, but no pies. Old King Cole smokes his pipe and listens to Fiddlers 3, but there's no mention of pie anywhere in his rhyme. <laughs> Also, I'm working on this bar graph, which includes all nursery rhymes that feature people drinking in bars. Probably more than you think. Here we hey, have he lives. Pimp My Carriage. Hey, ever watch MTV's Spring Break coverage? I keep it TiVo'd and watch it every Tuesday. This week I'm watching Spring Break 2010 where they wrap a guy and a girl up in a fantasy burrito. Anyway, if MTV did a show about Amish people called MTV's Room Springa Break, what would you hear in an episode? Yahoo! This is the week we choose a mate! The girls go wild with this butter churning marathon! Woo! We have freedom to visit the outside world! Or, we're in mourning! Get your soul stealing cameras off us! Room Springa, I think and... that's the outside thing, isn't it? Room Springa is yeah. an Amish tradition where teens get to experience the outside world before deciding to choose the Amish lifestyle as an adult. <laughs> And once they realize the outside world is made up of MTV shows like Pranked, The Hills, and 16 and Pregnant, they gladly return to the Amish lifestyle. I would too. Really can't blame them. Why not try? Heather has two motherlands. It's the perfect choice to into water than buzzing and see if you are right. Okay, this one's super easy if you ask me, but I'm contractually obligated to throw in an extra thousand bucks for a correct answer. Here we go. Place these Russian dolls in order from what? oldest to youngest. Anna Kornikova, Anton Chekhov, Mikhail Gorbachev. Gorbachev, Chekhov, Kornikova. Gorbachev, Kornikova, Chekhov. Chekhov, Gorbachev, Kornikova. Or Chekhov, Kornikova, Gorbachev. Is Chekhov old than Gorbachev? I'm gonna say Chekhov is the oldest. Anton Chekhov, the playwright, was born in 1860, Mikhail Gorbachev, the politician, in 1931, and Anna Kornikova, the tennis player, in 1981. That earned you an extra thousand dollars. This also just so happens to be the order from least attractive to most attractive. Possibly. How about Pain in the Slash? Because he's been killing the longest, which of these serial killers is closest to being able to retire and collect his serial killer pension? Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, or Chucky? Oh, who was first? Myers was first, wasn't he? 
The iconic movie slasher starred in his first Halloween movie in 1978, earlier than any of these other characters. <laughs> The serial killer pension is a pretty good one. $3,500 a month plus access to an anger management counselor, whom you may choose to murder. Yeah, but you don't want to exercise that option too early. You get it torment them a while. Open wide for Think Dog, It's Friday! And stop panting, it's a dis or dat. Nice. I'm going to read off seven names. For each one, I want you to tell me if it's a breed of dog, a famous religious figure, or both. If it's a dog, press the number one. If it's a religious figure, press two. I'll call four and if you correct. think it's both, press three. Each right answer blesses you Maybe. with 300 bucks. But get one wrong and you're 300 bucks deeper in the doghouse. And you've got 30 seconds to finish. Okay, we're off. Sharpay! Lao Tzu! St. Bernard! Vizsla! Zoroaster! Rufio really? de Flandre! Sholo eats Quintly! I have no idea. Four out of seven! Praying to a dog might not have been a bad idea. Come to think of it, you should have really tried praying to anything. Growing up, I had a dog that could walk on water. Well, actually, he just peed on the kitchen floor and then happened to stroll through it. Close enough for me. That'll wrap up round one. And you're doing pretty well. Probably because there's no competition. Remember, I'm doubling the value of each question in round two. And don't forget, our wrong answer of the game is still out there waiting to be picked. Let's keep going. This one's known as... Oh, no love. Don't joke about that. You know, the more time passes, the more it's acceptable to make jokes about disasters. For instance, it's totally fine to make jokes about the bubonic plague. <laughs> bubonic plague. But it's not really funny to make fun of, say, the Iraq War. Maybe the first one. <clears throat> With that in mind, considering the timing of some of the world's most famous disasters, which of these tasteless jokes most merits a too soon response? Knock, knock. Who's there? The Chicago Fire. Take my Lindbergh baby, please. The Titanic walks in and the bartender says, you're sunk. Or why did the Hindenburg crash into the road? I'm going to say Lindbergh. Oh, have a little taste. Nope. Here's what you meant to pick. The Hindenburg disaster occurred in 1937 was more recently than any of the other disasters. Wow. Thus really prompting the phrase, I that was back too in soon. Teens. And you'll be saying, oh, the humanity at the zany hut next Friday, where I'll be doing jokes like these that will be sure to offend you on multiple levels. Question seven. And now, I like big halibuts. If a subway footlong costs $5, and they come out with a new halibut sub that's as long as the USS Halibut Submarine, which is 350 feet, then how much would you expect to pay for one? $1,750, $1,890, $2,001, or $3,500? 350 multiplied by 5 is 1,750. Hooray for math! And nothing Simple goes math. better with halibut than some slightly undercooked Parmesan oregano bread. Lord and chickens picking out a mate. Oh. Guess I'll marry eight. Take a stab at partly cloudy with a chance of space battles. Hmm. Sorry, just a second. I want to listen to this speculative fiction weather report. The weather today calls for a continued desert heat across the entire planet with a 0% chance of rainfall. Also, there's a giant sandworm warning until the foreseeable future. Hmm, Dude. what fictional planet was that weather Arrakis. report for? Hoth, Pandora, Arrakis, or Caprica? It's Arrakis from Dune, but... Pandora's box, man. Smart people choose this. Arrakis, the planet from the Dune books, movie, and miniseries, is a desert planet plagued by giant sandworms. I get all kind of weird stations with this satellite radio. Overall, trading in Wonderland was down today on the hills of the Cheshire Cat, failing to 
obtain bailout money from the Queen of Hearts. Now that's the planet she from Avatar that was money. named after the Greek myth of Pandora's box. <laughs> and speaking of boxes that may or may not contain all of the world's evil, you've just won a mysterious box from Mysterious Boxes Incorporated. It's a box. Do whatever you want with it. But be warned, if you open it, there's an outside chance it may mean the end of the world as we know it. Today's wrong I'll answer, the game brings you an extra $8,000. Surprise. That seems logical, right? I call this one Twung Tisters. And speaking of tongue twisters, which tongue twister would anger a copy editor? Betty Botter bought a little bit of butter. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? Unique New York is very unique. Or mommy made me masticate my M&Ms. We'll do it with three. Unique means that something is yeah. one of a kind. Therefore, it's either unique or it's not, but nothing can be very unique. Although, to be fair, any tongue twister would upset a copy editor as they are devoid of any mirth or whimsy. Hold me, never let me go. Demon? Demon, 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 demon. This one's known as... Four! Your refreshment. Where would you find the rapper slash actor you would have to mix with lemonade to make the drink named after golf legend Arnold Palmer? The set of NCIS Los Angeles, the set of Law & Order SVU, the set of Barbershop, or the set of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2? Okay, so that one, that one, I have a cat trying to get me. I think he's on NCIS. Ladies do not love that answer. No. Want to see the answer? Shop, isn't he? No, he's not. Arnold Palmer oh. is a drink made of half lemonade and half iced tea. And rapper slash actor Ice T plays a detective on Law and Order SVU. My rap name he's would probably be Ice Age, because after I dropped a rhyme, it'd probably be deathly quiet for thousands of years. I can believe it. And ow, another <laughs> Step right up to the jack attack. When you see two clues that match, press one. $4,000 for a right answer, but you'll lose $4,000 if you're wrong. And don't ever forget... Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. What do you teach? I hope you had a well-rounded education. Good luck. Probably should have. Guy, the science guy. Mr. Miyagi. He probably could have taught boxing. It wouldn't have surprised me. Server Snape teaches something. I have no idea what he teaches. I'll have to guess. Peggy Hill was a substitute French, French teacher, wasn't she? I think. The redneck arts would work, too. Do we... Who? I don't know who he is. What's the first name? Probably Poe. Yeah, it was one of those. Where's the French? Spanish, then? Not as good a score as I'd hoped. There it is! You came, you saw, you conquered. Always has to be about you, 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 doesn't it? Look, yes. winning is great and all, but being a good sport is more important. So you might Not have fine. shown you know a lot already, but I hope you learned something today. You don't know Jack! Indeed. Nice one, folks. Okay, Danny, let us know what we're doing. All right, then. Have you any tinkling for jumping back into the proceedings? Hey everybody, this Dewey is Mike Wilt Builder, General something Manager on like of Jelly Vision Games. Rock. The that one you Jack, Jack played was hard at work here on the floor of the Jelly Vision Game Design Workshop, yeah. coming up with great oh, well, games that you'll be rock. playing that's in years to come. 
So, so anyway, this has been week products, 60 like of Let's Play You Don't Vampires Know Jack. Vampires vs. Show Dogs. Tune Black in next Yoki. week What's for that more. Smell? Newscaster, tax I will see you 3D, all then, and as always, farts, enough I leave about you, you with the commercials. and Tween Fighter. Bye, folks. We're also working on lots of casual games that are fun for the whole family. Puppy Bucket, Everybody Help Grandma, Jarts, Awkward Confessions, and so much more. So if you love fun and fart noises, clear some room on your game shelf for the Jellyvision games of the future. Morning, Ted. Oh, you look horrible. Rough night last night? You bet. It was Carol's and my anniversary, and we didn't get any sleep. <laughs> Sounds great. You'd think, but I don't know. Nighttime's just not the same as it used to be. Sounds like you need some nighttime putty. Nighttime whaty? Nighttime putty. It's just like regular putty, but for nighttime. Huh, how's it work? Here, I'll show you. See, because nighttime putty's made from a water-soluble, stain-proof plasticine polymer, I can mold it around this area here, or even back here, and up over this for a fit that goes on smooth and stays secure all night long. I see. Whoa, what's that part for? <laughs> I thought you'd ask about that. Look, if I bend this back here and open this flap, ta-da! Oh my gosh, how'd that get in there? <laughs> Beats me. Wow, Dan, you sure know a lot about nighttime putty. Hey, my late night buddy is nighttime putty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Dan. You dress yourself to the nines every day. Why shouldn't you do the same for your friend with nine lives? At Meow Inappropriate Cat Accessories, we stock hundreds of unnecessary adornments to shamelessly decorate any cat. We've got cat saddles, kitty swim trunks, feline infrared goggles, and introducing the electronic cat translator. Feed me. Leave me alone. Go f*** yourself. So if it's cute, if it's teeny, and if it probably shouldn't go on a cat, then you'll find it at Meow Inappropriate Cat Accessories, located between the Bicycles for Dogs Warehouse and the Lizard Mittens Emporium. And now a message from the law offices of Edgar J. Penrod. I'm attorney Edgar J. Penrod. Have you recently been in an auto accident? Have you suffered major injuries? If you answered yes to both of these questions, then chances are you're the person I hit with my car last week. So call the law offices of Edgar J. Penrod today. Because hey, nobody wants to go to court, right? The law offices of Edgar J. Penrod. Sorry, our bad. Monica, I have cherished every day I've spent with you. You are the love of my life. Will you marry me? Oh, Charles, of course. And what a unique ring. Is that a... Gallstone? Yes, it's mine. I wanted to give you something symbolic of my love for you, so I had the hardened excess bile that my gallbladder produced forged into your ring. How romantic. It's perfect. And you're perfect. I would have had a lot of gall to say no. On the contrary, love. On the contrary. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, that gallstone was one of the most painful things I've ever experienced. The You've Got Gall Gallstone Jewelers, when giving her a piece of your heart, isn't enough. Mm. Mm. Ow! What's wrong, baby? Your bee beard. It's too unruly. I don't love you anymore. No! What do I do? <laughs> Biz, get a buzzkill beard trimmer, bozo. Huh? Biz, get the buzzkill beard trimmer and shave or trim your bee beard for the utmost comfort for you and your lady. You can have bee mutton chops, a bee handlebar mustache, or a bee soul patch. Hey, your bee beard looks great. I love you again. Thanks, buzzkill. Who makes you look sharp without the sting? <laughs>